Hi, I'm Flo from Progressive. Being a baseball fanatic like me can be stressful. It's not all sports points and touchdowns. So Progressive is going to help you take your mind off your team for a moment. Instead of thinking about how they missed that goal point score, think about the Name Your Price tool from Progressive letting you choose coverage options based on your budget. Unlike your team that missed the end zone net area. Well, anyway, hope this distraction about Progressive's Name Your Price tool was helpful. It sure kept me from thinking about all those penalty balls. Yay, sports! Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Space News. I'm Braden. I'm Dan. And uh, we're up here in the orbiting meteor studios. Let me patch in Zell. Oh, there he is. Hello. What's going on, Zell? Wow, you guys look good up there. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's lonely, a little cold up here, but, you know, the view is pretty nice. Well, let's get right into a little bit of Space News. All right. First up, we had. Truly historic milestone. The James Webb telescope has been fully deployed. Um, I guess now we're just waiting for pictures or if it works. Yeah, it's got to run through a couple checks before it does that. Um, We got another couple months waiting until it's fully functional. Right. So its primary mirror has been fully deployed. The major components are all now deployed with this this like the last step pretty much right so it's operational now we just got some system checks and then we start seeing some amazing because isn't this thing going like a a, a inf- million miles yeah oh wait it's it's, it's <laughs> hitting the it's setting itself up in one of the lagrange points or lagrange points um uh there, which there are five of around between the sun and earth. And once it gets there, uh, these little, it'll maintain that little orbit. Like it's a gravitational pocket of stability out there. Once it gets there, um, you know, it'll run through. It's like the little motors. It's got to fine tune the, the mirrors inside of it. The like 18 segment primary mirror that it's got, all of those things are on independent little, um, uh, little mechanisms. So they all have to kind of like get a couple uh, fine tunes and then they, uh, you know, flex and bend it and then get some uh, pretty snappy pictures. I think there's a couple, I said about like several months they're looking at. So. Right. So it's sitting in like a perfect balance of gravity between the earth and sun. So it just always is in the same spot in the sky. Yeah. It's going to be, it's like right in the shadow of earth is where they kind of wanted to put it. So it's going to be like right there. um, Kind of, always in that in that one position so it'll be able to take like a lot of like pictures from that one spot man that's what a piece of engineering yeah it's neat it'll be up there for i think they said what it's like maybe like 15 20 years it's gonna be up there taking pictures i'm curious to see if like uh in like a star like a really dark night if you'll be able to like see its glow like a star and if you'll be able to track it on like a, a star view or something I wonder if you can do that already. Actually, I haven't even checked. I haven't checked, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's, I mean, it'd be really small. It would be. <laughs> yeah, good, but maybe you, see a, maybe you see a little flicker, right? Like you might be able to see. Yeah, I guess it was, if it's stationary, though, you're not going to see like a moving satellite. It's going to be the, the slow rotation. You have to like set up a time lapse or something. Yeah, probably. But it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's it's recording in infrared, so the pictures we see are going to be rendered. Mm-hmm. But like that, that's the best way to a <laughs> classic. Well, that's the best way to <laughs> let NASA <laughs> edit them all up. Classic, all doctored <laughs> images. But that's the best way to observe for potential like other planets, right? Right. Like, it's the best way to because uh, it's really like it's not going to be taking direct photos. Like you're going to take like a snap photo picture. It's basically taking the. It's got a near infrared camera and a near infrared spectrograph uh, that are going to turn on. And the spectrograph is the best way to kind of analyze like the atmospheres uh, and like the the makeups of uh, you know, atmospheric. Uh, like components in a planet since pretty much the sun hits those atmospheres and that light that passes through it 
we'll be able to, and NASA can analyze uh, the, the way the light changes as it passes through the atmosphere. And you can kind of tell what the chemical makeup of an atmosphere is, of what a planet is. So give us a pretty neat look at probably a bunch of planets that may or may not have atmospheres like ours. <sighs> Super cool. cool. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Perseverance has run into a problem on Mars. A little bit of pebbles. As you see right here in the picture here, um, I, I guess it, it can be, I mean, communication obviously is delayed be, between Mars. So it sent a message back saying that it's there's, it was having some issues and NASA scientists basically said, sort it out yourself, look at, figure it out. And so this is the image we got back. And as you can see, uh, that is the, like the mechanism that it, like, it, I guess it, the drill bits go in there. Yeah, I think so. And, Somehow, during one of its collections, a little bit of pebbles have got in there. So it's it's funny how it's it's, it's amazing that we can sort out these kind of problems this far away from something. But as of right now, like this is a pretty hefty problem. Uh, I've got a recommendation. They hammer it in reverse, hammer it forward, just hammer the brakes, kind of you know, redneck style. Yeah, shake it, <laughs> yeah, shake it, shake it loose. I like that. Yeah, man, that's. That's, yeah, that's insane that we you're communicating with a drone that's how far is Mars? Like 350 million kilometers away or something ridiculous. You're communicating with a drone to fix its own problem on a different planet. Yeah, and I, and I guess this like this carousel here is designed to be able to operate with some debris like that, but these two little guys right right there on the screen, they're a little too much. So um they're trying to figure out what to do. They're not quite sure yet. But I'm sure they'll they'll sort this out sooner than later. Uh, last up, this is great. Uh, the moon, the moon house. We uh, talked about this moon, moon hut. hut. Yep. Um, it was 700 uh, meters away from the Chinese uh, rover, and they were going to bounce it over there to see exactly what the moon house was, what it is. Uh, upon closer observation, it turns out to be a rock hut. And closer observation turns out to be a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a very they, big rock, they say. No, no, the, which is surprising. Really. Like that's that's the culprit right there. Uh, that a lot of people don't realize, like how much how different things look on the moon. Just the fact of like the way that light acts in the you know atmosphereless environment. Yeah. Like it can look every. It can make everything look really weird. Like it, it makes angles look a lot sharper. It makes like the shadows look a lot more like a lot different than you would expect them to be here on Earth. Um, so like a lot of these kinds of things. I mean, I'm amazed that this is the only thing that's kind of popped up that's been kind of weird, or the only thing that we've seen, anyways. Well, uh, dude, it's so weird. The original picture, it, it's like a horizon shot, and whatever's on the horizon looks drastically bigger than anything else there. So that's yeah. what, that's what got them interested. So they crawl their little rover over there over a few weeks, and then Different when angle. they take another picture, it looks like it doesn't make sense how that <laughs> attracted the interest. Well, I think it was like on a tip of a crater, is what it was. Like it was like on the on the lip of like a, a shallow crater or something, and that made it look like it was like standing out above there. When the light hit it, it just looked like a little bit different. Didn't come in all the way. Uh, or they're or they're hiding uh, the moon hut. They don't want you to know well, what's in it. Or that's what they're I mean. hiding. Yeah, that's they, what they I found mean. a chest. They probably they it had all this interest. They crawled o over there. It was a moon hut, and they said, it was "Well, a we monolith. can't. We can't tell people about this. So it's just a rock now. It's un unbelievable." Yeah, yeah it's it, it's a little strange that that's um, it, you know it doesn't. Seeing that and then finding out what it is doesn't give me much hope for the face on Mars or all the pyramids on Mars. But uh, I guess uh, we'll wait and see for that stuff. Well, but, those, one, those ones are from space, though. They're looking down. So you got yeah. a, little, a little more reference, at least. This one, I mean, I thought for sure we were onto something here when we first looked at this. I was like, oh, man, that's super cool. <laughs> Maybe not, not nothing artificial, but some type of like new, new like rock formation on the moon or something, I thought. But nope, just a pebble, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, next up, so yeah. what were you gonna say, Zell? Said or they're hiding it. Oh, they're hiding. Well, I, you know, it same. It wouldn't be that hard to point that rover and be like, "All right, just say it's that rock." It's that rock there. Yeah, exactly. We're taking their word for it. We're not up there. So until we get up there, um, 
Next up, we got a little bit of a conspiracy roundup. We're going to round up some uh, conspiracies and stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks. Uh, first up, we're dealing with the artist formerly known as Prince. Uh, <laughs> we've got Prince Andrew has basically lost all his royal titles and military affi- affiliations as he goes to face trial as a private citizen in the United States um, for allegedly, you know, his dealings with Epstein and that seven, I think she was 17. So so. this is kind of more of the fallout from uh, all the Epstein stuff. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see that, you know, Buckham palace and stuff is kind of, obviously they're separating, distancing themselves from Andrew. So, you know, is he going to be, left out to dry sort of, so to speak, or cause mm-hmm. I know his, like his, the trial, like he was trying to get it thrown out because he says, he's like, well, I actually can't sweat. And this lady said I was really sweaty and I, I don't sweat. <laughs> I so. can't sweat at all. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you were saying well, he, he had a condition. Well, you don't, uh, don't reptiles. They don't sweat. That is, that is true. They do not sweat. They expel their heat through their skin and absorb heat through their skin. So in that sense, he's not incorrect. I don't, I believe. <laughs> but I think this is a obviously. It looks I mean, uh, the the legal team for for the uh, for the the accuser. Uh, she they, they demanded proof. They actually sent like a demanded proof of him that he doesn't sweat. Like that was actually that was actually in the news. I thought that was a pretty that was a pretty smart move. It's well, pretty uh, and pretty they, good <laughs> fuck you move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he was sweating as soon as they asked him. He's like, oh shit. oh shit, and they're like, well, prove he can't sweat. Like, yeah. Yeah, I like think, it's ludicrous. Yeah, I, I think that. Well, I think I just think that this announcement of like, oh, we're moving ties with Prince Andrew. I think it's this is all a publicity, like a publicity thing. Like, we're going to look better, but he's ninety five. We're going to say we're you know partying with him, but really nothing's going to change behind the scenes. I don't think this is just they're trying to save face. Like, oh, we didn't know, we didn't know he's such a fucking weirdo. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Mexican Gandalf is saying we're going to have a bad time next year. <laughs> the warlock of Mexico. Grand yep, warlock. The grand warlock. Excuse you. <laughs> My apologies. Don't come after me. Yeah. Grand, Mr. Grand Warlock. So, yeah, I just learned about this guy a couple of days ago. He is the self proclaimed clairvoyant known as Antonio Vasquez. And uh, apparently, he's been doing this for over three decades. He's been doing this for three years. Every year, he puts forth the predictions just about, um, you know, at the beginning of each year. Uh, he reads tarot. We like tarot cards. He brings a deck of tarot cards with him, sits in front of a bunch of reporters, answers questions, and and, and entertains reporters uh, about their questions for the future and and their predictions about last year. Um, this year, I watched I watched some uh, bits of the the actual press conference that he did. Uh, this guy's awesome. <laughs> this guy is straight up mm. great. His beard is majestic. The dude is amazing. Uh, like I don't want Santa Claus bringing my gifts. I want Antonio Vesquez to bring me my gifts. You want yeah. The Mexican Grand Warlock. Uh, uh, yeah. Um. He sat there. He, he he drew his tarot cards, explaining the 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 significance between each draw and and talking about what it was. Um. But he they said this one was a little bit more somber than the other ones because he was uh, musing a lot about actual current world affairs. Um. He cautioned about things about climate change. Uh, saying that New York's going to experience uh, probably some severe flooding or something at some point, some more flooding in the in the coming year. Uh, yeah, so assured that he assured <laughs> he just that Mexican, 2012 or what? <laughs> starring John Cusack. <laughs> he he did assure uh, the Mexican media that uh, Mexico will weather the storm and that will be in the fir- quote in the first 15 places of those that are not so bad. He's, a, he's so, in the top uh, 15 countries that don't get it too I mean, bad. I mean, not, top 15, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> they, and of course, they asked him about the most important of predictions for the next year, uh, Mexico's chances in the 2022 World Cup. Ooh. Uh, Vasquez uh, was made a little bit of a disappointing uh, prediction as he indicated that the national team will have a lot of fun, but they will lose most of the games and fail to get out of the group stage of the tournament. So uh, oh, maybe that, don't put your money on Mexico. That is the, <laughs> that's the news that everyone tunes into the warlock for is of pro, pro level soccer predictions. <laughs> like when, when you sent me that article, I was like, they give this guy news time. Like, yeah. 
How it was, it was the eight, it was on the eight, the Associated Press. Like this. How much Press has he been? Thing. How much has he been right enough that they've been like, all right, well, hey, give this guy some. You know, has I he think, been right uh, as much as The Simpsons? He, yeah, no, actually, no. I think The Simpsons is a bit more accurate, but uh, I mean, he's made some predictions last year. I, I, <laughs> he's kind of been. I don't know. I think he's probably like seventy thirty. He, he, he predicted that Trump was going to get reelected. That didn't happen. Hey. Um, oh, well, we predicted he wouldn't win. So yeah. we're, you know, we're about the same <laughs> as the warlock. No, I like his general predictions though. I think he, he plays it safe saying that the world will continue to suffer from climate change. I mean, that's a pretty fair prediction. Uh, so right. yeah. in the ball he there. said the United States is going to go through some economic turmoil, which is like, when isn't that the case? But that did he not forever. mention COVID? Did he say, what do you say about COVID? Are we going to get through uh, it this year? Well, he made his prediction about COVID, uh, like when, when it started coming up, uh, 2021 he said that it'll be i think he his, he was quoted as saying it will be mastered in in like early may of last year yeah I see which, like he, easy which, was which, which, ah, but like that's when cases were going down that's true he, like he had they did go right. down in like may so maybe he's got an off by a year it, it looks like by may this year we might, we might have it hopefully <laughs> i mean maybe they maybe they didn't you know he was making the prediction about og covid and not Omicron. Yeah, yeah. So, Omicron. You know. Or or Delta Cron. He didn't have um, the card in it. He didn't have the Omicron card in his deck. He had the, the old one. <laughs> next up we've got uh if you've ever wanted to go visit the gates of hell, mm. you better go quick. Uh, because the Turkmenistan pre- president wants to close that sucker. You know what's the most surprising thing about this? I've known about this, but I didn't know this thing has been actively on fire since like the sixties. Yes. It's crazy. It's just a uh, giant asshole. Like you can see the people in there for reference. It's a giant asshole, just inferno on fire. Yep. It's and its origins are largely a mystery. We d- they don't know where. Nobody knows exactly when it formed or who did it or or who's responsible who for it? this thing. Well, that but see that's also a, I I had a theory on that because one of the theories is that it was a Russian drill drill team looking for natural gas that ignited something and then just packed up and left and took off. And it would make sense that like no one knows and no one wants to come forth because that seems like a little bit of a liability, doesn't it? I mean, look (laughs) at that thing. She on fire. It's been on fire for 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. And now they want to close it. It's big though. Like, so if there was a, say it was a drilling team and you're drilling down for natural gas, the drill bit's not, how big across is this thing? It looks like a giant cavern, like as on fire. But but here's the thing, I wonder if there was a pocket originally, like maybe it wasn't that big, and the initial like explosion or blast when it ignited, created that crater. Yeah, it just like exploded underground and then big old sinkhole and then just a bunch of stuff collapsed into it. Maybe, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, the pressure of the gas was keeping like, was elevating the ground and when they drilled through it, it just collapsed or something. Yeah. Right. Or the simplest answer, it's the gate to hell and it's right. always been there. Or if you enter right. it and you just pursue, proceed down. Yeah. You get there, I guess. But well, I'm going to yeah. tell you this, if you jump in, you're going to die. So, yeah. So grand, grand warlock Braden with the great, <laughs> per, great prediction. Shortcut to the underworld. If you dive yeah. into a fiery hole, you will die. Yes. You will yeah. die. If you're going to hell, I don't know, but you're, you know, you're definitely Yay. close to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> up next, we uh, why don't we get into some UFO reviews? All right, I That's purposely my, my did favorite. not pre watch them. I'm waiting, for, right. I'm waiting for amazement. <laughs> Prepare to be amazed. Uh, we got a couple good ones actually. Um, I'm gonna m- kind of move this here. Let's 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 just switch over so we can get right into a closer look. All right, this first one here. Uh, this was submitted December 3rd, 2021 from silent or sorry, Marion. What's IA, Dan, Iowa, Iowa, uh, silent, bright light, like the ISS, but was under the clouds. No blinking lights. Mm. and was moving very fast. Let's take a peek at this thing. Get a glimpse of this warlock. All right. Well, it's definitely something zip in there. Got like. Most of you are listening to audio, but there is a video version you could go on YouTube. It's a yeah. it's a orb kind of Yeah, we we just we're just seeing a quick basically a bright white light. And it, it can we agree here that first off, whoever filmed this landscape, thank you. Uh, what well we're done. seeing here is 
it doesn't it's it's either dusk it looks kind of like dusk to me like it's starting to get dark Mm-hmm. That sunset, um, like so, yeah. I think that's fair. This whatever this light is is definitely underneath the clouds, clipping along pretty good because we have tree for reference. But you know what? Like for me, I'm like this thing's just zipping. Like, could it be just a drone? Like they say silent, but it's it's small enough. What are you guys' thoughts? Well, I mean, silent is tough to judge sometimes at distance, right? Maybe that. Maybe I mean that could be a plane. Yeah. A smaller plane. It could, it could be a larger plane, just way off in the. But it does seem to be moving across the sky, pretty quick. Pretty quick, but it's not no erratic movements, no no disappearing, no reappearing. Just a steady straight. It looks like it's moving in a straight line. Yep, with a reflection off the setting sun, kind of making it seem like a orb shape. Is what it seems like. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's even a bit of reflection. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I thought automatically because a lot of these uh you, when you look at these ufo videos a lot of people comment on these ones uh people saying that you know during which is it's true you know during dusk that you know the, the way the light hits it a lot of things from underneath as opposed to oh you know on the top of it so it's a lot of but a lot of times you'll get like a, re, a really brilliant reflection off the bottom of a body of a craft or something like that um i mean i mean definitely it just looks like a, a very bright orb kind of trekking through zipping through the sky there but it's it doesn't seem to be moving faster than like a man like a potentially man-made craft um it seems to just be clipping along uh pretty fast but not not yeah no erratic movements none of the uh any of the observables that you would get with a uh supposed ufo nope i agree um zero to gimbal for me i'm giving this a like a one i i look at it and i i don't think this is something unknown I think I'd give it a two. Like I'd go on a two on this one. It is. I mean, it's definitely interesting. Like the way it kind of when, when I watch it, and I try to look at it closely. I don't know if it's just my eyes or something, but it seems like it's kind of like it almost seems like it, when it passes, it seems like it passes through some of the clouds and seems to kind of illuminate them from inside or underneath. Like it, it seems like it might be giving off its own light. So for me, some of that maybe seems yeah. to be uh, uh, when I look at it. Like I think that maybe it's giving off its own light. I'm going to go right in the middle. I'm going to give it a 1.5 just because my heart tells me that's a man-made craft. That's a plane or a large drone. Giving it a two for Dan. I mean, yeah, if it's illuminating like that itself, then that would be a little more, I'd be a little more interested. But just the how it's traveling, it seems like a plane, but that doesn't mean that if that was a UFO, say it was an ET craft, like if you're trying to blend into like the surrounding traffic, why not just fly in a straight line like a regular old aircraft? Yeah. No, nope, true. I'll go with the 1.5. Kudos though. Excellently filmed. Well done. Landscape. We love it. Uh, next up we've got, we're going across the pond to Great Britain. Uh, Stoke on Trent is Great Britain is where this is filmed. Uh, walking home when they looked up and saw these objects uh, they couldn't identify them, so they started to record them until they went out of sight. Without further ado, let's uh, let's take a peek at this one. We've got two unison black dots, like in in what appears to be another dusk sky. Um, they're just moving. They look tethered, almost like whatever they are. Oh, yeah, they look like they're whatever up there, these but are they're definitely farther away. Yeah, and they're just. It's an interesting because they look like they're moving together, but maintaining a certain distance apart from each other. Like one's not breaking away. They seem to just kind of moving like that. It, it's are they are they interesting moving to see. or are they like hovering? It's hard tough to tell. It's hard to see. It's hard to see if that's the cloud movement there. Because we don't get a tree again. Kudos landscape. We love it. Zoom out a little bit. Get us that reference. We have it there. So let's what let's watch it from the trees here. See if we can kind of see some movement. They look to be drifting like really slowly. That's I mean that's what my eyes say. Dan, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely two just small black dots hovering right on top of each other, and yeah, almost in a formation of some type. So it's I mean it's it's an interesting video for sure. I can't. I can't really say like my eyes kind of want to be like, and it might just be, um, you know, that's just a trick of the eyes. Cause what I'm expecting to see is like 
like I, like wings flapping. Like I kind of think I see movement at some points, but then it might be just when they zoom in and stuff. Cause I think it might be, I want to be like, Oh, those are birds just soaring on a thorn, a thermal, like they're just hanging out mm. uh, doing their thing. But they kind of stay. I, yeah, it, it's hard to see cause he's so far away and you can only really see them when he zooms in. Yeah. And, um, but they seem to be like the distance between them, like doesn't move like one. You think of it as birds. Like I guess I, you know, mind you, this video is only like 35 seconds long. So maybe shortly after this, they could move, but it's like, I would expect in this same, that one would like move or dip or yeah. do something. And he said, he said, time, he, he said he, the whole video, like the video just ends, at least the one that we have, like the video yes. just ends. He says he filmed them until they went out of sight, but the video like is still, the video like, just, they're still there and then it yeah. cuts off. Like I, so where's the rest of the video? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. We'd like uh, to see the whole thing. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's kind of a weird, weird one. They seem to be, yeah, they don't, they don't get any closer together. Seems like they're, seems like they're operating in unison, whatever they are, but yeah, not long enough of a video. To really, mm. and, and obviously it's, these are pretty far away. So you can't really, you can barely see them until you zoom in. So probably you're on the ground, you're looking up and you can see these with your naked eye pretty well. But when you put it on the, on the camera, you can't really see. So you got to zoom in. So you don't get any definition of a outline. Yeah, it's um, zero to gimbal for me. Uh, looking at this, the, the strangeness is that for me, it's the, they appear to be, I don't want to say tethered, but I just say tethered because they maintain mm. a distance and they don't, they don't deviate from that. That's strange to me. Um, the description raises some red flags for me where it says I filmed them till they're out of sight and the video clearly cuts before that. Um, so whether or not this was something I can, you know, there, we've got some, we've been criticized for posting a couple UFO videos where people are like, these are bilar balloons. I'm going to say that these probably aren't. So uh, I'm going to give this one another one out of one out of gimbal. I'll, yeah, I'd probably yeah, I'd probably go with a one. Like I'd probably what these are. I'm not quite sure, but I don't feel like they're. Uh, I don't feel like they're extraterrestrial crap. I feel like there's something because they're just they're just kind of sitting there, but they're kind of they're still moving. Like there's still some tiny movements, uh, but they don't look like they're intelligently controlled. They're not doing any kind of anything that I wouldn't expect something kind of, I, they could possibly be balloons. Like I just like caught next to each other. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going higher. I'm going with a two on this one. And I reason I give it is these are less identifiable than the last video to me. The last one really looked like a plane. These ones, if they were like, say they were little UFOs and they're just sitting hovering, maybe they, cause we always say like, Oh, sometimes the, they, they know when you're watching. So they like yeah. stationary and maybe when they put down their phone, these things zipped off. Who knows? I'm just saying these look, this, this looks a little more unidentified than the previous one, the, which looked like a plane to me. I will, I will hundred percent agree with you. I maybe should have given it a more, more, but I'm going to stick with mine instead of give, but I agree. It's, it's more unidentifiable to, to keep the mystery alive for me. I'm saying it's a two. All right. This next one we got, this is from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, the submitter said we were driving to the grocery store when turning into the lot. I thought I saw a black plane or helicopter. I wasn't sure what since I was driving, but when we turned my 15 year old daughter and I both saw the four white lights hovering in the mostly cloudless evening sky. There were some high thin clouds, but no inclement weather. There were four white circular orbs just hovering silently we parked and she immediately got out of the car and began recording on her iPhone. During that time, the orbs continued to hover and occasionally would blink out and back. Eventually, a fifth orb appeared out of nowhere. We quit recording because they took off northeast and we couldn't keep up. They disappeared. Cool. So let's, uh, let's take a peek from this one from Cincinnati. So four glowing objects. Four lights spaced out evenly. like two. It looks like two and two, but close together. They appear to be. Are they stationary? Or they just. No, they're moving. They just seem to. They <laughs> seem to be just standing. Just. And they're and then gone. They just yeah, and then they just blink out, and not in unison either. Like they don't blink out all in one go. They kind of blink out like one at a time. Oh, like it's, weird. Mm. It's like from here, like from this where we initially see them here. 
like you can really space it out that this is two and two, right? And like the two middle ones are kind of close together. But as this video keeps going, like we see them kind of drift apart. It looks like some erratic movement by some of them too. They're like, they almost look shaky. And then boom, boom, boom. They all just disappear. That is freaky. Um, only knock. Come on. Flip that to landscape. In a wide, <laughs> wider angle there. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, the fact that they disappear, then they reappear and they show back oh. up right there. Boom. Now they all, that is weird. It's, it's for, yeah, for oh, me, and there's the like, fifth one right there. And yeah. And there's a fifth orb that appears like on, over to the side of the, the frame and then comes in. And it's like, part of me wants to be like that. That's a plane, but also like it's way too close. Like the, the way that they're spaced, it's like they're way too close together or to, like you wouldn't, you'd see a plane. Like you'd see yeah. the rest of the plane. You'd see, you'd yeah. see it. If you could uh, there. see the, all four lights of the plane, you would, should be able to see the body if it's that close. Yeah. Okay, so if you if I pause it here and you give a give a close look, can you see that black dot in the center? I know it's going to be tiny on your guys' screen, but there yeah, appears to be a darker spot on the screen. Smudge on the lens. Ah, maybe I don't know. Just that <laughs> I was trying to see if that's something because this is so like it's such a wild video to me. I have literally no explanation as to. Like it definitely moves it, it like it moves like a plane, like a large aircraft. Like to me, like that seems like it's a large aircraft just kind of banking or something like that. But the, the, when it just disappears, like the lights disappear one at a time and not like in a smooth, like one, two, three, four, not in sequence, they just kind of like disappear. Like it's the right one, then the far left one. And then, yeah, I, it, that's kind of interesting. It, well, and the other thing, the other thing for me with this is, that, you know, if, you know, Dan said you, th this would be a large aircraft, but based on the size of those lights and how it looks, there's not many clouds in the sky and it's not quite dark. It like, it looks like it's getting dark again. It's dusk, but like you, if I think you would see a craft that big, if that was one big craft, you would see an airplane that was that big in the sky right there. I think we can all agree that there you sh you should see it if that is a big plane. Well, also like lights on the aircraft, like you have like red, which are like anti-collision lights and you have green and you have the white lights and you have strobe light. So, but those all seem just like just illuminated lights, like not, not colored, like they're white. Also they're like in the descriptions, they said they followed it till it went to the Northeast and they couldn't keep up, but I'm like, it doesn't, it, they just video again, just like cuts off. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is weird that the lights just all disappear. So like if you're trying to reason it, it'd be like, okay, that went through a cloud that we can't really see because then it pops back up. So I don't know if like there's a cloud, but cause right now that's like a, there's a dark cloud. So maybe behind be, it, maybe behind it, there's something else that we just can't see on this camera. But my, my first yeah. thought was these were satellites and they went, they dipped like over the horizon or something. And that's why they went out, but then they came back and I was like, Oh, well that doesn't make sense. Well, and the problem with the satellite explanation is they come back below the clouds. Well, what looks like below the clouds. Yeah. Of the three, this is one of the three of this, of our series of UFO videos. Like this one, I think is the most interesting to me. Just the fact mm -hmm. that you have light, you have lights, uh, orbs of light that just seem to disappear and then reappear out of nowhere. Like it, it, there's no, there's no identifiable, identifiable body like that. They're all connected to. It's just, Orbs of light that just disappear and then reappear. And it's fascinating. Yeah. And yeah. you can't even, you can't even look at it. Like, cause the way the lights go out, they, if you were trying to say like, oh, this is something to do with the sun, they, they go out and they like, it's, it's not a pattern. It's like one, two, three that you would see if that was the case. It's sporadic. This is truly a fascinating video. Yeah. I like it. And then, yeah, that fifth one kind of shoots up on the left there. Zero yeah. to gimbal. I'm, you know what? I'm I'm handing out my first gimbal, boys. I think <laughs> first is, gimbal. I think this is a bona fide UFO. This is a is this a UFO some sort of a singular or is this multiple craft? <laughs> multiple. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go with one under. I'll still go on the skeptical side. I'll still say four on the. I'll give it a, a four, which is yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it's definitely a UFO. I'm I'm not sure what it is. Like I've never seen anything, and it doesn't really uh, hit check any boxes. Uh, of things that I've seen before, but,
but it still doesn't really do any of the observables, but I have no idea what it is. Um, it, it, there's again, no displays of like anti-gravitic force or sudden stop and moving. It's like it, it to, when I look at it, it reminds me of the movement of an, just a large aircraft, but I have no idea what it is. Yeah. I'm going with four as well. And I think because whatever these are, these are reflecting light. These aren't, I don't think these are actually like navigation lights. I don't think, I think it's reflecting light and they dip into a part of the cloud for a second where you, so you can't see it and they pop back out. So I think there's four, information whatever they are and then there's a fifth above separate later in the video so i'm going with a four four to five gimbals that's uh yeah it's a that's a very interesting video one of the better ones we've ever had let's bring it back to the studio here um that's the ufo uh weekly review i mean that last video was something special i mean i very few times do we get really ones that are like I mean, a lot of times you can go like, okay, I think that's a plane. I think that's this, but I have no explanation for that. Yeah, no, that was a cool one for sure. More of those. Yeah. More well, of those. Uh, we get all our videos from MUFON. So if you want to take a peek at videos, and you want to search the database, you can uh, just head to MUFON.com. Um, that's it for Space News this week. If you enjoyed it, like, you know, give us a like and follow, leave a comment, what you think, uh, if you want us to change. Um we're the alien theorists live from orbiting meteor studios. And as we always say, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace out. <laughs>